So JJ, thank you for accepting my invitation to do this demo and to record the session. And at the end of the session, you may tell me if you want me to use it or not. So that's a possibility. Okay. So what do you need to get ready and center to start our session? Do you need anything? I don't need anything. Okay, good. So let's jump into whatever you would like to work on today. Okay. So today I'd love to get more clarity as to what my values are in dating. Mm -hmm. um, I have conflicting values right now. Um, I have um, my family who I keep in mind at all times. If it's someone that they're going to approve, they're going to like, and if that person will assimilate culturally with them. Mm -hmm. And then I have and then I have my own individual values of people I like who may, my, my family may not necessarily like. And so I just want more clarity as to which one should be my driver when I'm dating. Okay. And what made that important today? Well, I'm, I'm in a new relationship and I'm already seeing some potential conflicts with culture. And how, how long ago have you been dating? We've been dating for two months. And you saw him at the graduation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you told me. That's the crazy game. Did he make any comments at the graduation? No, he, he, he said it was the most compassionate room he's ever been in in Zoom. Everyone was spoke the, of an appropriate amount of time, gave space, and was so, like, you know, usually in meetings, you don't see people being so accommodating. So that was the feedback, yeah. So JJ, what would be a good outcome about clarifying your values by the end of the session? What do you think you can take with you? I would love to have a more uh, strong compass, if you will, when I'm dating and I go, okay, is it veering too far from what's important to me? Right now, my compass feels all over the place. I'm like, oh, my dad would like him. My uncle wouldn't. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have a strong compass moving forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what do you think is a good place to start exploring how to get this compass? Well, as you can tell, I'm Asian American, I'm Chinese American, and I think, you know, I'm a firstborn, first generation. And so everything I do is, is up until now has been for my family. And making them proud. And even in our language, when we introduce ourselves, we say our family name first and then our first name because it's the group before the individual. And culturally, that's more important too. And But then I grew up in the US where it's very individualistic. It's very you, you, you versus the group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I've had this conflict and I go back and forth. I date people my parents like, who they approve, and then I date people I like, who they don't like. And it's, I, I, yeah, I, it's just a constant going back and forth, appeasing both parties, one of the parties being myself. Mm -hmm. And you have to think percentage like, what percentage do you really pay attention to what you really want and what percentage you think what your family want? What would you say that is a percentage? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's pretty split even. It's pretty 50-50. I'll, I'll do patterns. I'll date someone I really, really like for a while and then I go, oh, my family won't approve. We'll never get married. So then we, we break up and then I date someone they really like. And I just go back and forth <laughs> between these two different types of people. And right now, I'm dating someone I like, but I don't think they will like him. Okay. What makes you think that? I, I've just, I have some tester questions I've already put out. <laughs> like, you know, he um, grew up very independent, very, his parents were like, don't, you know, uh, question authority, question the government, question everything you have every right to question, you know, what's being told to you, what's being fed to you by the media versus Chinese culture is very high compliancy, like be compliant, be compliant. And so I'm already seeing that. And, um, you know, we can't talk about it without talking about race because he, you know, 
grew up as a straight white male and I grew up as a minority female. And so just the way we navigate the world is different. And I'm concerned about the compliance part and the deference. Like there's a lot of deference that I give to my parents and my family, whether whatever they say is right or wrong, I defer and I go, okay, well, you're older. So I respect you and I'm going to accept it. And I'm, I'm concerned he's been brought up to question any, everything that's been given to him and challenge it because he has the privilege to. <laughs> and I, I don't think, I didn't grow up with that type of confidence to question everything that was told to me. Now, if you take a little bit of distance and you look at yourself and him at the distance and you see both of you, mm -hmm. what, what do you see in that interaction between both of you? What's happening when you're together? When we're together, everything is fine. Everything is great. I have a wonderful time with him. I see us, it we're just two humans who are compassionate and empathetic and want the other person to grow and do well. Like we want, we root for each other to succeed. It's when I zoom out and I go, oh, there's other people in my life, not just me and you. Like when we're, I feel like when we're together, we're in a bubble and it's not reality. We're in a bubble, everything is great. We're on cloud nine. And then I'm like, okay, when I leave that bubble, I call my parents, I FaceTime my family. I'm like, this is my reality though. This is outside of the bubble and he's eventually gonna have to meet them. What do you think will happen when they meet? What is your hypothesis? I think um, I think there'll be obviously a lot of culture clashes. I think my parents are very used to just saying whatever they feel like, and then you, and the kids just nod and go, you know, yes, mom, yes, dad. Um, and, and, and I think he's gonna have, it'll be challenging. I think he'll be polite and I think he'll like bite, hold his tongue, but it'll be challenging for him not to challenge some of their, their assumptions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, one of the very big things is like this whole vaccine thing. It's, you know, he's like, he's holding out. He's like, I want to hold out until there's been more testing and you know, et cetera. And my parents are like, no, ask, get it immediately. And so that's already a very, very sensitive topic that's gonna come up. Who's not talking about the vaccine right now, you know? <laughs> and even about political, you know, who knows if the parents like Trump or, you know, yeah. and the partner doesn't, this can be an issue. Yeah. The country is very polarized. Yes. Mm hmm yeah so if we go a little bit deeper and we focus on you mm -hmm. because i hear that there is a part that is him then there is your parents and your family and you what what's happening to you what what would you like what what, what is what you really would like to happen what um, would we, in the ideal world what would be the ideal world in an ideal world i meet people I really like, I'm not thinking about them. Like when I see them on the apps, I go on dates, I'm like, I, I really like his company. I would like, you know, being around him. And then my parents will just be happy that I'm happy. That's an ideal situation. Yeah. It's not reality right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing what everybody would love, wouldn't it be? I think that yes. can relate to that. Yeah. So what are you in, in this uh, dilemma? Mm -hmm. you know, how to manage when your partner may have different um, way of being or thinking. Now, where are you? Where do you see yourself going on in the future? How compliant are you? Let's I'm so compliant. I'm so accommodating. Like all the tests I take is like, I'm the most accommodating person and I respect authority, I res mm. you know, I respect rule books. And so I see myself molding to these situations, like trying to keep him happy, trying to keep my family happy and being what they want me to be in every situation. And what is your experience of that? 
like in other situations in that situation where you are meeting everybody's expectation your family mm. your partner well it leaves me questioning my identity and my values which is you know, at the root of this right the beginning of this i'm like what what do i think is important what 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 are my values because my values are right now inherent inherited from my parents and my family and so i'm having trouble seeing through them th through everything i've been given when i was raised and like because I, I see him anthony i'm like i really like him I think he's a great guy, but then I'm getting clouded. But I'm like, my parents would say this, my parents would think that. I'm getting, yeah, I, it's, it, I'm unclear what's actually even important to me. So that's, I believe that may be a good question. What is important to you? You know what is important to your parents? Mm -hmm. You know what is important to your partner? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is important to you? Uh, I'm, I mean, someone who, is i mean accommodation is really important to me i think it, it it says a lot about a person it says i'm willing to put aside my strong beliefs mm -hmm. and and my own values in that moment to accommodate the room and keep peace which is a huge part of me to like keeping peace keeping harmony and it's yeah, I think that's really important to me. I guess that's where my question for Anthony is, is how, despite how you were raised, are you willing to do that for, to keep peace for me? So that I don't feel like- the question, the question is to accommodate everybody and to make everybody happy, your parents, your partner. Where are you in that? What is the cost? Is there a cost? First, is there a cost for you being so accommodating to everybody there and to keep the peace? I've never thought of it that way. I've always thought, well, if my parents are happy and my partner is happy, then I'm happy, right? Because the most important people in my life are happy. I've always thought of it that way. But I have stopped dating people because I'm like, my parents wouldn't approve. So that that's a loss for me if I enjoyed what they added to my life. Do you still think it was a good decision? Yes, because at the end of the day, like, like the Jang name is so strong and so part of my identity. Like, there's, I couldn't disappoint my parents. I just couldn't imagine a world where I disappoint them. So what I'm hearing is what is important to you, in not only accommodating, but making your family happy is a priority in the list, is it? Yes. What, what happened when their happiness is not necessarily yours? Because what you said before is that by making the happy, you are happy. But what happened in situations where they may, they may be happy, but you are not? What happened with that? I think that's the sacrifice of being a child. And they gave me life. They raised me. They gave, you know, they put everything they had into me going to college. And that's a sacrifice we as their kids make. And my siblings make the same sacrifices. It's like, okay, if it makes dad happy, we'll do it. So the question for you about this, this is what it is and you embrace it, accept it and you're okay with it. So you don't, you are not, you wanna have more clarity but you are embracing this and you're clear how important this is. Yeah, I guess it is something that's in my head right now, immovable. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot let my parents down. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, you're right. I don't know what clarity I'm seeking. Maybe like feeling better about it. <laughs> okay, well, I, I think that this conversation, what I'm hearing is that you are exploring. Mm -hmm. that, you know, I am in some way challenging you and testing you you know, mm -hmm. how strong are these beliefs and how important they are for you. So what are, what is negotiable and what is not? And mm. what I'm hearing is that um, you are, your parents' approval and that, that's top priority. And I don't know, I, I, I have something in my mind since we started the session and I have been struggling to not <laughs> say it, but uh, <laughs> I am going to be open with you and I, I will tell you. Okay. What, what I would think of is because I have been there where mm. you are, 
Mm -hmm. And I think everybody is to some extent. Mm -hmm. When you're meeting a partner, you want approval from other people too. So that is the degree is different for everyone, but it is always there to some extent to everybody. So you're not alone. Okay. Okay. Now, that's the reason why I was asking you before about the cost. What is the cost mm -hmm. when you, mm -hmm. and it's not only the, only the people outside, but it's our internalized people, like our inner conversations. Mm -hmm. like it's our inner conversation with our parents. Mm -hmm. But um, what, I, what I was going to say or what I wanted to say, but I didn't find because again, it's an issue of value. So I didn't want to impose my values on you. Right. You know, but what one, my first reaction was, okay, you're going, you're going to be marrying him, not your parent. Mm. So when I say that, what is your reaction? Well, to that I say, Damien, <laughs> in Chinese culture, the mm -hmm. firstborn needs to take in their parents when they are old and save a room for them and take care of and live live with them like they move in <laughs> and i'm the firstborn so my dad did it with my grandparents they, they they were in the same household as me and that's a conversation i'm i need to tell anthony at one point <laughs> like we so need tell like at the beginning maybe <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea <laughs> Obviously, except for extreme situations, like if the firstborn is ill, whatever, whatever, and then it goes to the secondborn. But right now, I am responsible for keeping a room in my house for my mom and dad and my partner. So they are going to. So they are. They are married. They are going to marry them. Okay, I got it. Okay, I didn't get that at the beginning, but now I got it. Okay, okay. So we are clear about that. You yes. Know? That is my not. That is not negotiable, now that it's clear. It's interesting because it took a few minutes for this to come up to the conversation. Uh, and does, does he know that? You had a conversation with him about that? I mean, do you tell someone that in two months? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you, what do you think if you were in his shoes? What, what would you like to know? When would you like oh, to I you're right. I would, I would need to know that. If I'm going to be living with someone's parents, I need to know that. You're right. Um, I guess, it, yeah, I would 100% need to know that. I, I guess I was I was battling with it because I'm like, it almost is like assuming, like assuming we're getting married and moving in, like all this, but it is, you know, it's, it's, it's an inherent fact about my future. So maybe it'll be his decision, not mine. <laughs> Yeah, it's maybe not my choice to make. That that's a big thing to consider for someone's adult life. Well, it sounds like in your list of things that you in your compass, mm -hmm. that sounds like an important part. The person who is going to be marrying you mm. is going to get your parents as part of the package, you know, <laughs> of their relationship. Yes, and. Um, so it's going to be important that they get along, that they uh, accept each other. Yes. That be part of the process. So it has to be somebody who is willing to do that. Yes. There are creative ways to make it work. I have a couple of other firstborn Chinese friends. They build like ADUs in the backyard for the parents. Oh. <laughs> there are creative ways, but the fact is they need that. The firstborn takes care of the parents. Many, many cultures get mm. their parents to live with them. Even, even in the United States, many Americans also get their own parents for different reasons too. Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not as common that in different countries, but uh, yeah, still is, it's one way of uh, design, designing the family. Yes. So, so what, what have you seen so far in the conversation? Well, saying it out loud, I realized I'm not really unsure of my values. I, I know what is non-negotiable for me, which is my, you know, taking in my parents when they're old as a return for what they did for me um, as the firstborn and um, keeping the peace with them is, is critical for me. It's just, it, uh, yeah, no, no matter how wrong they may be or, or whatever, whatever, like, keeping the peace with them is critical for me. And so 
yeah i i i guess that's i don't know that's something i that that may not be my decision now at this point like we talked about maybe it's just sharing it you know this is a non-negotiable fact about me what do you want to do with that information anthony how do you want to show up to have the conversation with anthony um I was gonna say accommodating. <laughs> um, accommod uh, yeah, um, um, empathetic, like you know, uh, definitely in empathetic, and and understanding that this is a very tough predicament. It's not you know, it, it's you're you're not just getting me. It's this. It's a whole package, and a just a, a just empathetic is a human. That if this that's just too much pressure for you, I think that's okay. It, 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 this is me. This is my. This is my. I don't know. This is just something that's going to be part of me for the rest of my life. So, if it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be. Now, how um, confident are you that that will be the case? Either you, maybe other of your siblings who may mm. be with your parents, or is not negotiable or discussable. That's already it. It's negotiable. It definitely is. Um, like I said, if, if the firstborn really has an issue or speaks with the other siblings, you know, it can be, it can be a shared responsibility too. There's, you know, I think tradition can be malleable, but generally you go to the first one as the first option, and then, yeah. I'm asking this question about possibilities. Because mm -hmm. many times we live our life thinking that something's going to happen and that may not necessarily is what ended up happening for different mm -hmm. reasons. Um, but the question here would be in terms of right now in this with this dilemma, having more clarity about what's important to you. Mm -hmm. How do you want to show up if in you know in the, in the next conversation after this session? So you're saying that you want to be understanding, you said accommodating. Anything else that come up for you? How do you want to show up? Transparent. Mm -hmm. I want to be very transparent. Um, to be respectful of his time and his intentions and his energy that he's putting into me. Um, as I would hope he do the same if there's anything I need to know about um, on that side of things. Um, yeah, I, I, I think those would be big things to bring in. Anything else? No, I think, it, I think, yeah. And like not envisioning, I'm just like showing up and I'm like, I'm a purple rock and it, the color won't change. So let me know, do you want this purple rock or not? <laughs> Yeah. Anything else came up for you in the conversation before we wrap up? Um, no, I, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge your part about when you said, um, you know, what we think might ha happen may not, we, you know, um, the different possibilities. Cause that's something he said to me too. He's just like, I, you're, you're kind of worrying about X, Y, and Z, and we're still in A, B, and C, you know? Um, so he's like, let's just take it day by day and live in the moment. Because like, I've, I've kind of started previewing something. I'm like, listen, there, we're going to have to talk about my family eventually. We're going to have to talk about my culture eventually. And he's like, it's okay, let's do it. We're still getting to know each other. Like, let's, you know? So, um, maybe I am preemptively just worrying about all the worst case scenarios. Um, that's something else that came up when you said, you know, different possibilities and out of outcomes. What I'm hearing too, for what you told me last time that we met is that you really like this person, Anthony, and that you may fall for him if you didn't fall. I don't know how, where are you right now? But you don't want to get hurt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like him. If I didn't have this legacy, <laughs> I would be with him. 
and it'd be fine. It would just be me and him. But it's just like, I, I have some, I'm carrying something on my shoulders that I'm proud to carry. I, like, I don't look at it as a burden. It's just part of my legacy. What is the last, um, in terms of next steps, what's mm -hmm. coming up for you? What are you, you're, we talk about how you're going to show up and um, when, how do you, anything you want to discuss here that before we finish in terms of what you're going to be doing? No, I think I know how I want to show up in the conversation. Now it's just a matter of deciding when. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if, if I am jumping too quickly into that concern, but all I can be, and hopefully him too, is understanding, empathetic, and transparent in all of our conversations about any concerns that may come up, not just mine, you know? So, yeah. And any challenges, anything that can be in your way to show up that way to him? Yeah, I think my empathy might be challenged at moments if he's unwilling to bend, if you will. I might say, okay, well, goodbye. Because, <laughs> you know, this is part of me, like we said. Um, and just remembering to be empathetic, like, you know, everyone has a different path in life and different choices to make. And this is the choice I'm making for my life. He doesn't have to make the same commitment to my parents. <laughs> So that might, that piece will take reminding to be kind. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Okay. Anything you want to say before we finish? Uh, no, thank you, Damien, for, you know, getting me to things that are really obvious now that I say it out loud, but before I was like, unsure cloudy but now i'm like immovable non-negotiable like those are strong opposite words <laughs> and i just didn't realize how immovable it was until you questioned me on it i'm like no it's non-negotiable so thank you well i wish you good luck and i hope it works out for you one way or another whatever it happens uh, it works out for you so thank you for being willing to open up and be vulnerable here in this session is it okay still for me to share this recording in class? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, letting us learn from this experience. I'm going to, to stop the recording. <laughs>